Okay, I did a earlier video similar to this one, and I've added some new features, and I think I need to discuss a couple of other issues. So I'm going to redo the video. So if you have a link to the old video, it's probably broken, but obviously you found this one. So here we go. This is the set of proposed paths from the CIT group discussing the path of the plane coming into the Pentagon, and they claim that it passed north of the Sitco gas station based on some eyewitness interviews. Uh, so we're going to look at the plausibility, the physical plausibility of these eyewitness descriptions. Now, uh, I have serious issues with the way the, the information, the data was taken from these uh, witnesses, and I have discussion of that on my website. So if you go to 9-11 Speak Out, Go to the Pentagon tab and look down at the commentary on the CIT interviews. I have one commentary on uh, the testimony of Albert Hemphill, who was located right here in the Navy Annex. And he was looking out the window, uh, and the plane came over his right shoulder, which indicates it's over on this side, as far as I can see. Uh, the CIT group claims that it was over his right shoulder, but it, it passed over his right shoulder as it was coming across uh, north of the Sitco and then going back. So somehow uh, that's their description there. So we'll um, uh, evaluate that as well. Okay, over here is the first witness, uh, Ed P-A-I-K, I say Pike, I don't know, Pike, however you say it, guy who owns a auto repair shop here. There's the Navy Annex and just off screen from here is the Sheraton Hotel and uh, it's in between there okay and uh, this red segment with three dots here this is actually a curve i put in here that's an arc and uh, notice you can already see what i'm doing i have the curvature of the arc together with the speed of the plane uh, and from those you can compute the acceleration the lateral acceleration of the plane and compute the banking angle what i've done is I've illustrated the banking angle uh, graphically here because uh, some people just don't digest numbers as easily as they digest visuals. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's look at the, the various paths. Uh, before I do that, I want to comment on the speed of the plane. Um, the speed of the plane we get from a number of reliable sources. In my mind, they're reliable sources. Um, CI, the CIT guys tend to dismiss all of them. Well, let's look at what they're dismissing. I've converted all the speeds into meters per second to enter these calculations. They were originally given in knots. But just look at the comparison here, 242.56. That's the average of the last five seconds. So that would be the average over this interval uh, that's basically five seconds-ish from uh, Ed Pike's uh, station to the Pentagon. So in this last five seconds, the average speed was about this number of meters per second. Um, here's some of the radar uh, uh, sources. There are four different fairly local radar installations that are independent of each other that uh, all uh, collected data on the positions of this flight. What I did was I plotted the positions of uh, given by these radar installations on Google Earth and uh, then used the measuring tool and found the distances and so sort of take the distance divided by the time interval between successive positions you can get a speed. And so for DCA, that's uh, Reagan National Airport, which is very close to the Pentagon, just a little bit south of the Pentagon, you get 241.79 here. And that was the one that got the closest radar data point, as close to the Sheraton Hotel, just off this picture here. So it was getting 241 and a fraction close to 242, comparing that with the average for the flight data recorder of 242 point something. But notice the, uh, they agree, okay? These others, the last data point is further away, anywhere from a kilometer up to about five kilometers away. And the plane was picking up speed. And so you have slower speeds like this IAD. I think that was for the Dulles Airport radar. 
but the last data point there was about five kilometers out, so it wasn't going as fast at that time. If you compare these various uh, radar speeds with the speed given by the flight data recorder for those same times, there's good agreement within a percent or two. I have one other one here, the Wayne Costi measurement. Notice it is consistent with these other speeds as well. Uh, by the way, this one by Marin, uh, that's one of the eyewitnesses, and that's just a seat of the pants estimate. Uh, and so notice that's a little bit lower. So this, I believe, was like 350 knots. And Albert Hemphill had another estimate that was in the same ballpark. So those are not anywhere near as reliable as instrument measurements, but they are also indicating high speed uh, flight here. Okay, so even if we go to these low numbers, we'll do those at the end and see how much that affects the results. So starting with this, here is uh, from Ed Pike's auto shop to the Pentagon. He described it as going over the Navy Annex in a line that was more or less like this. But notice if you uh, project that out, that goes south of the Sitco. So somehow you would have to modify his uh, eyewitness testimony to put it north of Sitco, even slightly north. Look at the bank angle. And this is not just at one point along the flight. This would be how much you would have to be banking the entire time as it's flying like this in order to make that curve. So in other words, the radius of curvature would require this kind of banking in order to curve the path like that. Okay, that's 68 degrees. Very noticeable. That would be the most noticeable thing about the plane uh, if you're an eyewitness on the ground. And notice that's just a very slight uh, difference there. What if you put them up here where a lot of the uh, other uh, witnesses presumably place the plane up here? Uh, you're going to get even higher bank angles. Uh, if we want to match this curvature to some of these actual paths here, let's try that. Let's take, uh, let's see, I'm going from here. Uh, let's go to here. And let's go to here. All right. So I'm just measuring the curvature around this part of this arc, which was one of the paths drawn by one of these eyewitnesses. Look at that, 87 degrees, almost 90 degrees. Uh, the plane can't do that. Along with the bank angle, that's like 19 Gs. Uh, the plane's good for a couple of Gs, you know, two and a half, maybe even three, whatever. But uh, 19 Gs, uh, I don't think so. So this path is clearly erroneous and has to be rejected. There's no reason to think of that as a legitimate path. So here's, uh, I'm not sure whose path this is supposed to be, but let's take that. So here is this path right through here. Again, 12 Gs. And there, look at the bank angle here. All right. Um, so bottom line is uh, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. Look how uh, much curvature you know, if you have a plane that's tipped something like that, that's believable. But look at that. The, the flight path looks almost straight. Uh, once you get the enough curvature to even notice the curvature, you're getting a se severe bank. And even something like that, 47 degree banking angle, somebody's going to notice that. That would be part of their eyewitness description of the plane. Nobody described bank angles like this. In fact, the employees over here at the Arlington Cemetery, Craig Ranke gave him a little model airplane to hold, and he was holding it more or less level, maybe a little tiny bit of bank. If you take the hemp hill uh, business that you think from Craig Ranke's description that uh, it came in over hemp hill's right shoulder, but that was in crossing it over to go north of Sitco somehow. Look at the bank angle. And you think Hemphill would not have described that as he was giving this very detailed description of the plane going into the Pentagon. What Hemphill was describing was a plane that was to the south of him. At one point, Craig Ranke says, well, there's a Virginia Department of Transportation VDOT uh, tower. And, it's, and he said, you know where that is? Yeah, he knows. 
And he says, what is it, was it like there? Well, I don't think it was quite that far. So he was clearly describing going this direction. His estimate was it might have been closer than that. Uh, so let's put it in here. Let's put it even here over the corner of the building, somewhere like that. Uh, now uh, we have impossibly large banking angles, 6Gs, 7Gs, whatever this is, and uh, uh, banking angles that would clearly dominate his description. He was describing something going straight into the Pentagon uh, south of the Sitco gas station. In fact, uh, Albert Hemphill uh, testifies that this pole right here, the second light pole, he saw that one get knocked down. So um, uh, he was testifying to a plane flying south of the Sitco through the light poles. Okay, let's put a slower velocity on this. We have all of these different ones. I'll show you how to switch them around. V is the speed used, the speed or velocity that's used in the equations. And I can just set those equal to any of these constants down here on the input bar. So for instance, if I want to say the V more in, this is the seat of the pants estimate along this uh, edge of the Navy Annex down here. So if I just say V equals, uh, and then spell it exactly with upper and lower case, uh, V capital M O R I N. That's going to set that equal to 180, which it just did. Okay, so now let's see what effect that has on uh, uh, the situation. Uh, what actually happened was that uh, Marin uh, was watching along this edge of the Navy Annex, and his description was. He saw the plane all the way until it disappeared behind a row of trees. So here's your row of trees. And so he saw it at least this far as it was, uh, this is sort of a downslope in this area. And uh, so he was looking in this direction. He was not looking at something going up there. But let's ignore that and let's assume that somehow uh, he was looking at a plane that was in the process of crossing over to the north side of the Sitco at that point. There you go. Even with this lower speed, we still have a 69 degree bank angle. That is clearly not what anybody described. So even at these lower speeds, we get the same results. So just think about it. From the time you're at Ed Pike's shop to the Pentagon, you got five seconds. The plane was flying in a straight line. The more realistic view is it was actually down here. That's the uh, that's what all the, the radar and the, uh, the FDR, and that's where the light poles, all of these indicate that was the path of the plane. Eric Larson interviewed Ed Pike uh, some years after. From his conversation with Ed Pike, he was not standing out in the parking lot. He was in his shop looking out through the window. So he was looking to the south, and so it's quite plausible that the plane was here. I want to point out one other thing. All of these eyewitnesses, pretty much every single one, the one thing they get wrong is the estimate of the distance to the plane. Keep in mind, here is a very large plane moving anomalously fast, and they see it as very, very close. A woman in the Sheraton Hotel named Deb Anloff or something like that uh, said you could feel like you could just reach out the window and touch the plane. So it appeared to be obvious, obviously much closer than it really was. Ed Pike described it like he felt like it was coming right overhead. Well, it's not right overhead. It was off across the road and he's out looking through the window. It couldn't possibly have been overhead or he wouldn't have seen it but it was down here somewhere to the south of him. He also described it as flying so low he thought it might hit his head. So uh, the estimates of distance to this kind of uh, event where you have this very large, fast-moving object that you have a hard time just guessing its distance, and that's consistent here. So for instance, Albert Hemphill thought it, it came over the corner of the Navy Annex. Well, We've shown that even if it did, uh, he couldn't have gone north of Sitco here. The physical evidence shows that it was actually down here uh, in the line indicated. All right. But uh, let's not push that. Let's just look at 
these eyewitness paths, and there are none of them that are uh, realistic. But let's look at the gentlest curve. How about this one right here? Okay, something like that. Look at that curve right there. Look at the bank angle. So even that gentle a curve, you would have a very steep bank and you would have eyewitnesses testifying to a very steep bank. That didn't happen. So this demonstration file uh, that I have here, it's uh, it runs in GeoGebra. You can download GeoGebra from geogebra.org, G-E-O-G-E-B-R-A.org. I have version five of the classic edition. Uh, that's what I'm using here if you want to use the same thing. Download that, it's a free download. And you can then uh, open this file and you can play with the, uh, the curvature, you can play with the velocity, set it to any of these you want, or put in your own, just type V equals whatever down here. Keep in mind these are in meters per second. So go to, uh, go to Google if you want to convert knots into meters per second, something like that. And there you go. I want to give credit to Frank Legg, who died a few years ago. He and I did a paper, did two papers actually on this topic. Um, people tend not to read papers, I have found. So doing this as a demonstration and then doing it up as a video, um, hopefully will get actually looked at by more people who are engaging in this discussion but you can't really engage in this discussion without some kind of anchor to reality. So what I'm trying to provide here is an anchor to reality. We have a curvature velocity combination that produces this kind of a result uh, for the doing those turns. And that was not observed and it's not even possible in, for these kinds of angles. Could it have happened? The answer is no. These are not uh, descriptions of reality.